Hey, I'm Shane, and today I'm going to be talking about the Sony 90mm f2.8 macro lens for Sony full frame cameras. And in this video, I'm going to do a comprehensive re review of the lens, talking about the build quality, the image quality, and everything about the lens. So let's get started. So this is the 90mm f2.8 G macro optically stabilized lens for Sony full frame cameras. This lens is designed for the A7 series like the A7R, A7S in lens cameras like that, but it also works on APS-C cameras like the A6100 or A6500. So basically in this video, I'm going to talk about every aspect of the lens, reviewing it pretty well, and then also talking about the other options on the market that have come out since this lens was originally released and how good of a value this lens is. But before I dive into the review of the lens, I'm going to talk about the basics of the 90 millimeter focal length and the macro functionality of this lens. So it's functionally a 90 millimeter lens and it's a medium telephoto prime lens. If you've ever used an 85 millimeter, it's very similar to that with one notable exception. It's also a one-to-one -one macro lens. So being a one-to-one -one macro lens means that if you were to have a subject at the minimum focus distance of this lens, it translates it optically exactly the same size onto the camera sensor. So if I had a quarter here and took a picture of it, it would be the same size on the sensor. But if you have a sensor that's 42 megapixels, you get so much detail from that image because of the size that this lens can reproduce at, making this lens awesome as a very competent macro lens. In terms of the build quality, this lens is built very well. It's a 608 gram lens, which makes it quite heavy, but there's a lot of glass in this lens in order to focus that close. If you've ever used the Canon 100 millimeter macro, this lens is very similar to that lens in terms of its weight and just a general feel. The big notable exception though to other macro lenses on the market is the fact this lens has a manual focus clutch, which is a fancy way of saying that the focus ring can move. So when I have it engaged in this position, it is in manual focus mode. And if I pop it forward, it goes into auto focus mode and you can change it in the camera to be electronically focused then too, increasing your focus throw. This is a killer feature. This lens is so fun to use and the fun part of it actually is incredibly practical. Say you're taking a picture and you're in autofocus and you just can't get it to nail the focus, switching into manual focus is a dream. It's very easy and often when you're doing macro photography, you want to switch between them and this lens makes it super easy to do so. In terms of controls, on the side of the lens you have a few, a couple toggles. One is a focus limiter making it from half a meter to infinity or from the minimum focusing distance to half a meter, which is awesome at improving your autofocus speed. And the other toggle is for optical steady shot which as I said, this lens is stabilized, which is a huge bonus for when you're trying to do macro photography and you need very steady hands. The last feature on the exterior of this lens is the fact that it has a programmable button on the side, which you can change to whatever you want. Sony advertises that this lens is weather resistant and Basically, that means it's not weather sealed, but you won't get dust and moisture inside the lens. I'm not going to be taking this lens out in the rain, um, but it would have been nicer for everyday use if this lens was fully weather sealed. But it's not a GM lens, it's just a G lens. Okay, now I can move on to the fun part of this review, and that is the image quality. This lens is sharp. It's, it's just super sharp. According to DxO Mark, it's one of the sharpest lenses ever made. I'll show some images here of the lens. Most of them are going to be from macro photography because that's what this lens is really made for. I don't really use it often for landscapes or just non-macro work because it's pretty heavy. 
And when I'm going to do photography like that, I take my lighter lenses like my 85 millimeter or my 70 to 200, which is more versatile. And this lens is usually reserved for when I wanna do macro stuff. But with that said, at f2.8, this lens is super sharp and can get some more lower light situations and is really awesome for that. However, when you stop it down to f4 to f5.6, this lens turns into an insanely, insanely sharp lens and you can like blow up your images to as much as you want and you just see that the lens is outperforming the camera and it's just super fun to use. And often when you're doing the macro photography, you're gonna be stopped down quite low to like f5.6 up to f16 in order to get enough of your subject in focus. So this lens is awesome in that range. Once you hit f22, you can definitely tell that diffraction is becoming an issue inside the lens, but like what lens isn't. In terms of vignetting at f2.8, you can definitely tell there's a teeny bit of vignetting around the edges that's very easily corrected in Lightroom or Photoshop. And in terms of chromatic aberration, again, there is a bit of it, but it's not gonna reduce the sharpness of your images in any meaningful way. And I'd say this lens is very good at controlling the chromatic aberration. However, there is room to improve if Sony were to update this lens. The last thing is the bokeh. And this lens has very, very nice, like blurry backgrounds. And it's very pleasing to the eye. I don't have any other macro lens to compare it to right now. So I'm going to just let the images here speak for themselves. Like it's able to completely isolate your subject and really get some nice, not very busy, like not hard edges bokeh. It's very nice and smooth. And I really like that about this lens. Most of the time while you're using this lens, it'll probably be in manual focus. And as I said earlier, this lens is an absolute dream to use in manual focus and is by far my fo favorite uh, Sony lens to manually focus with. And I wish, wish this focus clutch motor system would be what they put on other lenses. I understand it's impractical probably in a lot of situations, but I personally love it. In terms of autofocus though, this is an autofocusing lens and that's probably a big reason of why someone would consider buying it. And this lens is very fast and super accurate, mainly thanks to it, thanks to the mirrorless bodies it's put on. However, I've never had an issue with the autofocus accuracy. The biggest issue that I have with the autofocusing is that it's a tad bit slow and you can't fault the lens really for that. It's a very fast for a macro lens and the fact that it's all internally focusing. So it doesn't protrude from the front of the lens when you're focusing, which makes it awesome and very easy to use if you want to put ND filters on the front. The only catch is, is that if you really want to use this lens to its full potential, you want to use the focus limiter because otherwise it's going to be trying to pull focus from like 28 centimeters up to infinity, which is just it's so far that it can focus that it just takes a while when it's like hunting because if it's hunting it's hunting really far so it takes a little bit if sony does update this lens another area that could use improvement is the autofocus speed i'm not saying that it's not perfect it's it's very good but the issue is is that if you're doing video or something this lens doesn't keep up with other lenses in the similar focal range and i don't think if you're going to be like looking for a perfect everyday lens to use for things besides macro photography, the 90 millimeter is going to slow you down quite a bit. So in conclusion, this lens is awesome. It's very well built. It's very, very easy to use and it pairs awesome with the Sony full frame cameras and really gets you a lot of sharp macro images very easily. The catch is that since this lens has been released, there's been a couple more options that have come to the market competing with it at a better price. This lens comes in at $900 US or $1,500 Canadian, but it goes on sale pretty regularly and you can probably get for $850 US or so. And I actually got mine for $1,200 Canadian brand new. So it's pretty, pretty easy to find it when it's on sale. So I recommend kind of looking for some bargain hunting if you're shopping for it. 
However, with that said, there are other lenses on the market that are cheaper, and I'll talk about those. Starting off with the other option from Sony, which is the 50mm f2.8 macro. This lens is much smaller and much lighter than the 90mm, and it features a very similar build, and it's a very nice quality in terms of that. However, the autofocusing and the sharpness are significantly worse in the 50mm. But my biggest issue with the 50mm is that the 90mm macro is awesome because at 90mm, you don't have to be super close to your subject. So you're not going to be startling that bug that you're taking a photo of. At 50mm though, that becomes quite a big of a, bit of an issue. So you, you can't really take pictures of living subjects as easily or you just have to be a whole heck of a lot sneakier than I am. And since the autofocus is slower, it's, it's giving you less opportunity to get that shot. So I find the 90 millimeter is gonna be a better option if you're doing more dedicated animal macro photography. However, for $500, the 50 millimeter is definitely a very appealing option if you just wanna get a macro lens that can kind of be more versatile if you wanna walk around and not have to change lenses. The other one-to-one -one macro lens for Sony right now that I'd really consider is the Sigma. The Sigma 70 millimeter f2.8 arch lens that they have. That lens has been made for a whole bunch of different bodies now over the years, and it's a very well-established established lens. The thing is, it's a much different lens than the 90 millimeter in a whole bunch of areas. The 70 millimeter does not focus internally. It protrudes from the front element, like protrudes the front element quite a ways out when you're at one-to-one, -one, making a very much so more delicate lens to use and also much slower in terms of autofocus. The autofocus is super loud compared to Sony, which is like almost completely quiet. And it, it's just a, a lot slower. So if you're looking for a lens that is equally as sharp the Sigma is super close to the Sony. However, in terms of usability, the Sigma is much less like functional, but it's only $580. So you get all that functionality of being a very good sharp macro lens, but at the catch that it's a little bit slower in focusing. So I'd recommend the Sigma if you're doing more studio work or more casual macro work where you want that performance in terms of sharpness, but you don't necessarily need the speed in the functionality of the Sony. And the last lens I want to compare to isn't actually a one-to-one -one macro lens or even an autofocusing lens, and it's not even cheaper than the Sony. <laughs> and that is the Voigtlander 65 millimeter F2 aprochromatic lens. It comes in at $1,000 usually. It's a very hard lens to find but it's one of the sharpest lenses ever made. And it's probably sharper than the 90 millimeter. And it's just super cool. The thing is it's a two to one macro lens, so it can reproduce things at half the size on the sensor at the minimum focusing distance, which is really cool, but it's just not as macro. But realistically, most of the time when you're doing macro photography, unless you're taking pictures of really small things, you can get by with that 50% reproduction but the Voigtlander is heavier than the Sony and also just a lot smaller and chunkier. The big reason I'd think the Voigtlander might be a cool option to consider if you have the budget is because it's a lot more of a traditional lens that pairs really cool with the Sony like bodies with their high tech and their focus peaking, making it a really interesting combo for more kind of a, a tactile um, performance and you don't really need autofocus while you're doing the macro photography so I think it's a cool option to consider but I never bought it because the Sony is just way more practical in almost every regards unfortunately so in conclusion the Sony 90 millimeter macro G lens f2.8 is an awesome lens it's a very versatile lens so you can use it for a lot of different things for one price and it's not going to be the best at anything but macro photography though. So if you're in the market for a macro lens, it's pretty much the best lens you can get for Sony. 
but the issue is it's quite expensive. And if you're gonna buy a macro lens, it's really hard to recommend this as your first lens. So in that sense, I have one thing I wanna to recommend to you, and that is macro extension tubes. Give me one second. <laughs> so these are macro extension tubes. I got these for 20 bucks on Amazon. These are like the Mike ones. But basically you slap these behind a lens in between your camera and the lens. And it basically extends the minimum, well, brings back the minimum focusing and distance of that lens. It doesn't turn a lens into a truly macro lens and it works better on wider angle lenses, but you can get like a four to one macro. So it can give you definitely a good sense of how macro photography works at an insanely cheap price. So I think if you're considering going into macro photography for the first time, try these out. I'll make a separate video on the extension tubes and I'll put the link to it in the corner here when I do get it completed. Um, but I highly recommend trying these out. And even once you get a macro lens in the future, you can always slap these behind the macro lens to make it even more of a macro lens. So. I think you should try giving these a try before jumping in, but when you are considering a macro lens for Sony, the 90 millimeter I think is the best one you can buy on the market. Thanks for watching this video though. I hope you have a good time watching it and got some information from it. If I missed something or you have a comment on something I said, or you just want to say hi, please leave a comment below. I try and answer all of them and uh, I really appreciate it really appreciate it when you guys comment um, but i also would love if you consider subscribing to this channel and liking the video it helps out a lot as well and i hope to be making more future videos and your support means a lot to me anyways thank you very much for watching and i hope you have an awesome day see ya